I'm going to do a little different presentation on mustard, comparing it with spring canola, and also a little bit on the winter canola. These three crops are fairly close, and uh, hopefully you can gain a little better understanding of the value of condiment mustard, spring mustard, in your rotation, comparing it with the other two. Using winter canola as a uh, baseline, these are the five-year averages from the University of Idaho trials across the PNW at nine different locations. And uh, that's their mean average on winter, the mean average for spring canola, and the mean average for yellow mustard. So you say, why would I want to raise mustard compared to the other? It's one for the money, and when you golf, you putt, and that's where you win the dough. Uh, canola prices for the futures market, FOB, Eastern Washington, and this is from the CHS Big Board, as well as uh, Northern uh, oh, North Dakota and Lethbridge. Back on the 11th, all the prices were running in that 24 to 25 cent price range. Yellow mustard this last year was contracted at FOB Moses Lake at 35 cents, and we look to be 38 or more this coming year. So, do the math. When you compare the three crops, we've learned so far that all of the brassicas really require a minimum of a four-year rotation. All of them germinate fairly well. Yellow mustard will germinate at 40 degrees. It's very frost tolerant. Uh, I've seen it down to 26, and uh, it'll knock out a few plants, especially in the draws where you get down to 24, but it keeps right on ticking. A yellow mustard does have a faster emergence than spring or winter canola. It is a shorter growing period, typically 85 to 90 days, whereas spring canola is just a week or so longer. And then you've got, of course, the winter canola. If you're looking at crop management for height, uh, again, this, these are data from across the PNW. Yellow mustard typically at 45. The spring canola is 50 to 60, and with the winter canola at 70. Seeding rates, I, I think we've pretty well covered that. Uh, yellow mustard, uh, I've got growers who are seeding down in the four pound range. I deliver 10 pounds of seed, uh, and I take a lot back. The reason I like to have a little higher plant population is because if you do ding it up, uh, you do get a poorer stand. The more Indians you got, the more arrows you better have, or you have. Uh, on yellow mustard, I look at uh, 18 to 27 plants per square foot as an optimum uh, growth range. If I'm down around seven to 10, pushing 15, then I'm still gonna have a sufficient yield. Uh, very similar to spring canola and not quite as forgiving as what uh, winter canola is. Uh, water usage, you're looking at in that 100 to 120 pounds, maybe even a little higher uh, for yellow mustard compared with, uh, I think, winter canola, you're up there in the 140 to 160. Uh, insect challenges. Uh, over the last uh, half a dozen years, I've had one yellow mustard field that has been injured with flea beetle. Uh, every canola field that does not have an insecticide on, uh, flea beetles come with the seed, and so you definitely want to have it. Uh, aphid is a minor problem in yellow mustard. It's a big problem, or is getting a bigger problem in the canolas. Uh, cabbage seed pod weevil doesn't affect mustard, it does the canolas. We've had some minor injury with ligus, 
canola's getting worse. Cutworm, uh, especially early in the spring, your soil cutworm will affect some mustard stands, uh, especially on the wet years. Uh, diamondback moth, uh, army worms, typically we've never had a problem in yellow mustard. I don't know if you can, if that's very well focused. Uh, that's just one aphid, or a colony of aphids on one uh, seed uh, head on a canola plant. Uh, when you start seeing these uh, in your canola field, you better be spraying. Uh, I very seldom see them in an aphid or in a, a mustard field. Uh, I have had some incidents of sclerotinia, uh, both soil borne or at the soil level, as well as uh, aerial in yellow mustard. It's a lot less than what I've seen in canola. Uh, we do not have a black leg problem. We do have Pythium and Rhizoc some years, but it's very seldom. Uh, fertility wise, we run pretty much the same program on our mustards that we do with our canolas in that six to 10 pounds of N per 100 pounds of seed yield. I do like to keep the FOSS levels up a little bit. Uh, potassium levels, uh, I've never seen or been able to document any uh, level where in our soils in the Northwest that we require any. Uh, I did make a mistake on my slide. Uh, I run a minimum of five to one, or that's actually on the high side, and it's a lot better if you were at four to one, not the 10 to one. Uh, and again, as any brassica crop, uh, boron does influence seed set pollination. And uh, if you're running uh, in acid soils, 5-8 uh, uh, to 6-2, you're running legumes, peas, or, or any of the legumes, then run some zinc, and that zinc will carry over for you in a yellow mustard program. Uh, the mustards aren't uh, as blessed with the uh, herbicide program that you do have on the Roundup Ready, the SU tolerant canolas. Uh, you're going to see a bigger problem if you're planting mustard. You want to make sure and watch your rotation of herbicides. And uh, the bulletins that I've listed here, uh, PNW 0437, uh, 0571, and 0572 are excellent material to have in your library for watching herbicide uh, rotations and carryovers. Uh, yellow mustard, it's a very low shatter index. You direct cut. Uh, I've had very seldom have a wind shatter problem. Uh, 50, 60 mile an hour winds doesn't affect it. Uh, I have watched uh, wind rows of canola roll across the fields but I've never had a yellow mustard field roll. Uh, whereas with the canola, you do have the extra expense of pushing or swathing. Uh, and just a nice looking field with the green machine making money, uh, cutting uh, uh, yellow mustard. Thank you. I got into raising into raising oil seeds very early on when I came home and started farming with dad. We started by raising uh, winter canola was my first attempt and I had tremendous luck, beginner's luck the first time out of the, out of the uh, gate why we hit 2400 pounds of canola and I thought boy this is a this is a sure deal. Of course then I had to cut it now, with an old O2, a 7302, why that was quite a challenge. Um, my next year was a lot easier to harvest but my yield was lower. Uh, I just went steadily downhill. I ran into all the problems that the fellows have told you about. The early seeding, we tried early seeding right at the end of July. I never backed up into the middle of July, but we did go right at, towards the end of July and we had aphid problems, terrible. I sprayed twice in the fall, sprayed again in the spring, put spodinum on it and cut 1,100 pounds and decided that that was the last time I was gonna raise canola for a while. Um, we tried raising spring canola for several years. Uh, this was back in the time when we were um, um, reduced tillage, so we were running minimum till, 
and uh, I was using a pair of a set of uh, International 150 hoe drills to plant my crop. And with with spring canola, the problem, one of the main problems I had was. Uh, depth control. I wasn't getting a, a decent stand. In five years of raising the crop, I never beat 850 pounds. Um, we still had the insect problems that we'd faced with the winter canola. And uh, I just, I, the markets weren't all that great. Uh, so I decided to try something else and got to kind of flailing around and asking people. And someone suggested I try um, spring mustard, yellow mustard. So we, we did that. We went that direction. Um, I can't say that, I, that I've, I've had successes every year, but um, I feel like over the last um, eight crops of it that I've grown, that I have, I have learned something each year and I get closer to knowing what I'm doing, I feel like I can pretty well, um, pretty well count on a thousand pounds or better now in a, in a crop if I do my part right and Mother Nature doesn't argue too much with me. Um, when the price of, uh, of mustard is, is in the mid-30s or, or up to 40 cents, um, it competes very well with anything else that I can raise in the spring. Uh, you know, I've raised spring white wheat and red wheat and hard white wheat and, and barley. And um, the yellow mustard has return-wise been very good to me in that way. One of the things that really appeals to me about yellow mustard is is that I can contract that crop. I know exactly where it's going to go and how it's going to get off the ranch. I don't have to fuss with that when harvest is finished. The rest of my crops are, are delivered to the co-op elevators. And um, they handle the storage and, and those problems. When I started raising yellow mustard, I began working with Galen, and um, it's just been a, a dream for me. I can harvest that crop, haul it to the local elevator. They put it in a, in a segregated bin. Um, normally within a week after I'm done harvesting, why, why Galen's crew has been in there and retrieved that mustard and got it out of their hair. So it's, it's, it's off my farm. I don't have to be concerned with it any longer. It's out of the grain growers' elevators, so they don't have to be concerned with it any longer. Galen has taken that on down there, and that's worked out wonderfully for me. I think that that's one of the biggest roadblocks I have faced in, in trying alternative crops, period, has been the marketing of that crop. It's one thing to be able to grow it. It's another thing to be able to market it, to get it out of, the, out of your hair, to get your return back in in your pocket so you can put it in the bank and start satisfying your creditors. Um, spring canola was, was kind of that way. The, the crop was normally contracted when I was raised it, but, but they would only contract a certain portion of it at that time. Now, I haven't looked at that market in a long time. Maybe that has changed. But with the yellow mustard contract with Galen White, it's been, it's been a, a good deal for me. They would take my full production at a, at a given price that we set before harvest. And I, it's a, a, got an act of God clause in the contract, so I don't have to worry about it. If I have a crop failure, I have a crop failure. But I don't have to go out and buy additional tonnage to, to make it up. It's worked out great that way. I have tried winter canola, spring canola. We have raised sunflowers. Um, sunflowers are, as Tracy said, a, a very interesting and I think an exciting crop to grow. I would raise them again, but for the marketing aspect of them. Um, <coughs> winter canola has been presented to you to, as, a, as a high management crop. The older I get, the lower management crops I'm beginning to look for. <laughs> um, I've got more on my plate now than I had 20 years ago, 30 years ago when I was raising winter canola. And it's harder for me to find the time and to dedicate the time and the effort to that management. Mustard has been simpler for me in that respect. As Galen showed you, there are very few insect pests you have to deal with. If you can get a stand of, of mustard established, your weed control, other than the uh, grasses, is, um, is not a concern. I have never had, even when I've only had and I hate to admit this number, 350 pounds of mustard production, even at that low level of production, I have not had a weed problem in that, in that crop. I have used yellow mustard as a precursor to chem fallow several times, and have never had an increased weed problem in my chem fallow following it. 
It's a, a tremendous crop for rotation. The, the taproot helps to break up hard pans. I have always felt that there was a soil conditioning effect to that plant residue. And on one of the reader boards that was set up here in this room, why there was, there was statistics to that effect, that it helps to break down, helps to, to uh, reduce the incidence of soil crusting. I have always felt that, that um, if I chem followed behind yellow mustard, that by the time I seeded my winter wheat in the fall, that that ground was more mellow than it would have been had it, had it raised a, a spring cereal crop. So I, I've enjoyed that aspect or, or have appreciated that aspect of it too. Harvesting is not a real problem with yellow mustard. It's a little slower than, than my spring cereal crops, but there's not the huge mass of material trying to shove through the combine that you have with a winter canola. Um, the larger, newer combines, of course, handle it much better. We've all found that for no matter what crop we're cutting. But um, I don't know. I don't know what else I would. I would tell you about it. I will raise yellow mustard again. I come to a conference like this. I think when I walk in the door that I've got my plans pretty well set for the year, and I know what I'm doing. And I leave this place thinking to myself, God, I wish I had another 400 acres I could try some of these other things on. Because I would, I would really like to plant more winter canola. I would like to, by watching the yield numbers that have been presented up here for the spring canolas, I would like to look again at spring canolas. And I know also with the, um, the genetic modifications that they've done in the spring canolas, they have alleviated some of the weed problems that I was having. That was one of the things that, that was bad about spring canola. I could never get a dense enough stand to provide weed control. And with the mustard, that hasn't been a problem. So that's. Uh, I think I was supposed to focus on why. Those are the reasons why I've kind of settled on yellow mustard. Thank you. Steve and Galen. Thank you, Steve and Galen, and thank you all. Um, we have, we can probably take uh, a couple of questions. We're running a little behind schedule. There's one hand up already. Go ahead. Do you all hear that question? Uh, how about the market for the mustard? North America demand is uh, increasing. Uh, production is going down. Uh, our biggest uh, competitor is uh, our friends to the north. Uh, they're shifting their acreage a lot of it from the mustards to the canolas uh, because their spring yields are better than what their mustards are. Uh, the Dakotas are going uh, corn and beans, as we've seen, and so we're seeing our domestic partners asking for more local, locally grown uh, yellow mustard. And uh, our customers are uh, they like the quality of the product that's coming out of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, one of the largest mustard customers that we've dealt with on the East Coast told us, he says, your material is too good. And that kind of shocked us. He says, I can take a cheap mustard crop and make a quality product out of it and when he's terming quality, he's competing on uh, markets going into uh, uh, mostly the military, a large customer base use. And he says it's easier to change, not to change. Uh, Canadian crop is very consistent in quality, and it's not that good compared to ours. And so he says it takes me longer to adjust your mills with higher quality product. I don't know. Did I answer your question, Mark? I hope. Market is up, yes. <coughs> Take one more question, uh, if there is one. These two bottles sitting up here happen to be Heyday Oil Company Safflower Oil from Madras, Oregon. Uh, the person I spoke of earlier uh, brought these, and uh, they, uh, his family farm consists of several crops, including a significant acreage of uh, 
safflower each year, so that's unique. Did you get a question right here? Uh, one more question. Yeah, Jim. Uh, the question was how to deal with the weed called bed straw in uh, in the mustard. Don't plant it in that field. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Bed so, straw is our worst weed. So that's one for Drew and his team to work on, I see. Okay. Uh, Karen, do you have some announcements? 